Well, it's great to be down here at the training ground talking football again with two people really responsible for how we managed to get back to this stage, Stuart Douglas and Chris McConnell. Of course, in the current crisis, family comes first. Chris, in our situation here, when did you realise that we really had to step things up in the current crisis? Um, so, obviously, when when uh, lockdown ended up happening, uh, of course, everybody's everybody's prime concern was the health health and safety of everybody's families. So, uh, simply, we we stuck to the government rules, and uh, when when the season basically was given given the go ahead for the, for uh, for pre-season, we just started planning for that. Uh, it was a nice collaborative process, obviously involving involving Dougie and the manager management staff, and uh, yeah. Uh, just sort of stepped up, made a plan, stuck to it, and hopefully we're starting to see the results from it now. Yeah, Dougie, tell us a little bit about the task force team and how it works, how you came together. It was quite difficult, I think, if you speak to any club, trying to maintain players' fitness from a, a remotely, it's not easy. Um, and you have to rely on, on players being uh, willing to, to, to do work by themselves. Um, and that can be tough. We've got a good set of players here. So the work that Chris set them when we sat down and discussed what they could do, it was difficult. I remember initially you could only be training and going for a run by yourself. Um, and that's, that's not easy. So the boys followed our plans very, very well. We came back early actually the pre-season. Our pre-season was probably a, a seven week pre-season, seven, eight week pre-season because we didn't want to cram a lot of work into a congested space. If you've got time to transition and periodize, periodize perfectly, you reduce the risk of injury. So if you have a look at the stats that we, we, we take, the, we've had a 92% availability um, for, for training uh, and matches this season, which is great. Um, but I think that's because we planned meticulously um, pre-season. We, we, we extended that, that pre-season time so that we could just gradually get the boys to where they need to be for the first game of the season. And if you've been watching the games, I'm sure that you'll see that the players are fit, they're, they're, they're raring to go, they're athletic. Um, and the signs are good, the signs are good. And the management appears to have been very, very trusting with you guys as well, yeah? Yeah, the, the, listen, that's the, the thing about this club that I really appreciate and respect is that if you lead a department, they let you lead the department. Um, and they take your opinions and your advice on board. And not every club does that. Um, I think we're, we're very fortunate to be at a club where Chris has an opinion, I have an opinion, we sit down and we have discussions and we relay our ideas to the gaffer and, and the coaching staff and they take it on board. So we're, we're lucky, very lucky that we, we have that collaboration um, and that the, the coaching staff are open and receptive to what we'd like to do. Yeah, I think uh, I think just elaborating on that, I think the gaffer's sung a lot of praises for everybody else, but both the gaffer, Dorsey and Robbo, they, they deserve some enormous credit because they've been, they've, they've been brilliant during this process. They've been, they've been diligent in the plan that's obviously been, been set by everybody. Uh, and, and yeah, I think I think the boys are looking in really good shape. And by extension, the players' application through lockdown and through pre-season has been been brilliant. I think Pig said earlier that I don't always show it, but uh, <laughs> they've been they've been absolutely outstanding. In fairness to them, they've they've, they've really hit the ground running, and they've got a bit between bit between their teeth at the minute. So I was going to ask you as well, Chris. I mean, in terms of league guidance, how important has it been to, to get that from the league? But also, when there's so many other rumours and things going around, separating fact from fiction at this stage. Uh, we, we sort of just go off of the league, really. So uh, what, what, what their guidelines are, we, 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 fo we follow to the letter, um, and, and yeah, we that's that's what we do. Sort of given given our circumstances, given the resources at our disposal, uh, and and yeah, until until we hear otherwise, we, we continue to crack on and uh, and roll with the punches. So during the lockdown as well, you've been really impressed with how the players have handled the situation, yeah? Oh, very, very. They've been. They've been excellent, so as Doug has alluded to in there, um, it can be very difficult to, to train on your own, um, a little bit segregated from everybody. Um, I think at times it was important to get the group together to do, to do certain sessions, which, which we've done. Um, but yeah, their, their application during that time was, was, was second to none. It was, it was really, really good. Um, and I think some of that hard work that they've done during that period has been been shown when they've come back for pre-season, some of them come back different athletes, uh, improved certain areas and I think it's been it's been really good. Obviously the situation wasn't isn't isn't great in terms of in terms of COVID but I think from their from their mentality they've realised how much they miss football and uh, and they've certainly come back really enjoying it. So and that and that makes their application even better as well. 
have you been able to stay in touch with other clubs as well, seeing how they, they've been handling things too? Yeah, yeah so um, obviously last season we had Julian Lammy on, on loan, so um, I liaised a little bit with, with Rotherham with that. Um, I come from Millwall earlier in the season, so I spoke a little bit with them. Uh, I got quite a nice little circle. Um, a, a, a guy from a guy from Stoke and a guy from Charlton as well. So uh, we've got like our own little circle, which which we sort of stayed stayed in contact with. A lot of clubs sort of either doing the same things or, or obviously just collaborating with certain things, and that was another pleasing thing from probably my discipline in the sense that. Uh, practitioners all coming together really to try and solve solve the problem together, which which, which was quite nice. Um, a little bit of dialogue. Everybody's situations and resources are a little bit different, so I think again you sort of look at, look at the league guidelines and, and and you can sort of pick people's brains, and then you might try try and sort of implement some of those some of their ideas into your own situation uh, and, and vice versa. So yeah, a, a fair amount of contact, but also uh, you've got to consider consider what what your club needs and what, and what your players need as well. Dougie, we've seen in the past the relationship you have with the players in the treatment room there. Do you feel that that's, that's good that they're able to come to you if they've got any yeah, fears about this it, as well? It's really, really important. I, said, I think that if players are comfortable, not just within the physio department and the sports side department, we're, we're under the same umbrella really. So if players are comfortable and, and, and that they'll want to work and you'll get compliance. And compliance is, that's the most important thing. We see players, what, three hours a day there's still another 21 hours in the day. So whatever information we pass on to them, we expect them to take that on board and, and do things when we're not with them. Uh, and they do that. We've got a great group here. Um, football's full of cliches. So they say, um, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Now, before we came back at pre-season, we sat down and we were extremely diligent in our preparation to come back and trying to navigate through this COVID-19, almost like minefield, really. It's been easier because we've prepared. And I'd just like to say a special mention to Bob Shawwood. He's our COVID-19 officer. He's done an amazing job, amazing job. And he's made my job, and probably Chris's job, a lot easier. So we've really followed his lead and he's liaised with the EFL. And, and it's come together. And even us having to set up gazebos and work remotely from the training ground, it's, it's ended up being a lot better than what we expected. The players are, are much closer. And we have a really tight knit group, and and for me, this is probably the tightest I've seen us since we got promoted in 2016. Um, so yeah, hopefully that bodes well. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that as well. The training camp that we've got here, yeah. you've been indoors, you've been outdoors, yep. you've got all the stuff out here. Yeah. And as you say, that really has seemed to bring. It has, and, close and, and that was something that we didn't expect. We've done that because we had to. We had to, to take, like, have our COVID-19 tests. We had to make sure that people initially adhered to social distancing because only training groups of five. And when we've done our planning, that this was the best way to make sure that we tick those boxes. Now, what's happened on the back of that is that we've been more together. People haven't been on their phones. Um, fortunately, the weather's been good. So we've had maybe two days of, of wind and rain, which we take. We live in England, so we're very fortunate. And, and it's worked really well. So I just think that the culmination of the planning, having being a, a little training camp set up here, it, it's, it's, it's equaled a great feeling about the club. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about the season. Yeah, I think when logistics are almost taken out of your hands, uh, it, it requires you to sort of think outside the box or, or, or look at other ways of doing things. And obviously with COVID, we haven't been able to, to, to be in house uh, at, at the building. And um, it just makes you assess and ass assess sort of your practice. and and potentially find new and different ways of, of implementing what you want. So, and I think, I think with, uh, with what we've got outside as well, um, it's, it certainly, it certainly reaps some benefits. It's been good. Tell us about the daily routine that we have here as well, because it really must dominate the thinking still, even to this day and onwards in the future, yeah? Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, at the minute we're, 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 we're setting up, uh, we're setting gyms up outside, we're set, setting gazebo, oh we don't have any gazebos yeah. up here, do we? The gazebos so, got blown away with the wind, so they're, they've, they've, been, they've uh, long gone, but it's sunny so we don't need gazebos at the moment. They're the only injuries we've had yeah, yeah. this season, isn't it, uh, gazebos? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we, we get in a nice bright and early uh, to, to set the gym up and then normally the, the players will see the physios um, to, to get any manual work, um, just to just to check in uh, if, if they've got any problems or, or or any niggles or anything that we need to or anything that we need to consider for training. Uh, then 
uh, probably about half an hour before training, we'll have like an activation group where they just do like low level exercises just in preparation for the training session what the demands, demands are going to be. Uh, come out to train, normally warm up with myself, um, Martin or Harrison, uh, the t uh, our two sports science assistants. Uh, they'll, then, they'll, then, they'll then train, uh, sort of 10, 10, 20 minutes with me, and then they'll, they'll have a training session with that. And then, depending on the day, depending on our focus, I might have some supplementary stuff, stuff for myself. Generally, a lot of training, sort of ball based and game based, uh, depending on what the coaching staff want to do. Uh, then they'll sit down, sit down for lunch uh, outside. So we go and cook the food um, down at base, and then uh, we'll bring it up here for them to eat. Again, they'll see the physios. Um, again, sort of. Tied tied in with uh, tied in with any responses from training. Uh, again, if we need to sort of manage them, manage them either tomorrow uh, or for the gym session, that'll, that'll follow after lunch, and then the gym session will be either leg based, power based, or, or body based, depending on uh, depending on the day and depending on what the next game is. And then between between myself, Dougie, and in both departments, we'll sit down, uh, just have a debrief for the day, uh, and then sort of just put plans in place for the following day. So both. Both myself, Dougie, and the manager and the management staff, we like to work probably at least a day ahead in terms of in terms of what players are going to be available for training and what they can do. So we'll just have a we'll have a sit down. We'll go through training. We'll go through the GPS data. We'll go through go through any potential potential modifications they need for the next day. Uh, and then we pack up and then. Uh, yeah. And then, and then depending then, on yeah, the... Yeah, we turn removal men, didn't we? Yeah. So morning we're removal men, <laughs> then we do our jobs, then after training we're removal men. You're, like, you're, 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 you're I'm a bin, bin man, man as well, actually, and I'm now. A, and I'm a yeah. wedding planner yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so all the rubbish will go back in my car, we'll take it away. But listen, you, you, everyone chips in, yeah. and you do what you have to do. Chris, yeah. I was going to say as well, I mean, the fact that you've not even been in this job for a year yet, and the challenges you've faced, do you feel it's brought, brought your skills along a lot more as well, having to deal with these demands? Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly not 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 what I envisaged when uh, when I come in in January. Um, but also, I think I think that period is what you make of it. So, like, I know a lot of people have been unfortunate to sort of lose their jobs and everything. I'm, I've I've been lucky in the sense that I didn't. Uh, but it gave me a chance to analyse my own philosophy. Um, it gave me a chance to analyse what. What the practice was at the club before before I come, but also what I was looking to implement, and it gave me a real good chance to sort of narrow in and, and have a have, have a look at what what I wanted to what I wanted to suggest and recommend when when we come back in. So um, yeah, of course it's a challenging period. Um, some some things have been handicapped a little bit, but again we, we, we don't make excuses at this football club, uh, and, and, and we look to implement the best practice that we can. And, as, as I've sort of said about the manager, he's, he's been terrific with me. Um, he's he's taken on all my recommendations in terms of what I've wanted to, what, what, I, what I think is best in terms of implementing. And by extension, Dougie's been a dream uh, in terms of in terms of. I didn't pay to say that, by the way. I didn't pay to say that. I didn't pay honestly. I didn't. Well, pay the, amount of, the amount of money <laughs> I owe you, so, <laughs> things like that. So, but, uh, um, on, a, on a serious note, he's been, he's been, he's been it's been a dream, and he's, he's, we've, we've both been singing off the same hymn, hymn sheet since I've come in. So, um, and I think that's the most important thing. We've been a really good team up to now, and long may it continue. Doug used to say as well, in terms of fitness update, now we're going into the season, we've hardly got any injuries, and we've also got, I think, got to bring, mention Katie as well. She's been an important part of the I'd team. I'd like to mention, yeah, we've got, we've got I'm really fortunate to have a, a great medical team. I say medical, sports science, and, and physio, we're under the same umbrella. So. Obviously, I was very close to Jason, who was a sports scientist before, and, and Chris has come in, and Chris has been unbelievable. Um, really good. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> but he's, his work ethic, he's second to none. Um, he's passionate about what he does, and when you work with people like that, like-minded people, it makes your job easier. So first and foremost, he's doing an unbelievable job. Really, really good. Um, Katie has been here a few years now, and uh, yeah, I can rely on Katie. The players will respect her. She knows what she's doing. Matt, the new 23 physio, works closely with me, so you could really call him an assistant first team physio as well. Um, they're all very good and they work hard. Um, I have an intern, student, Alex, great. Loves what he does. So we all come in and we've got a smile on our face, and I think it's important. If you, if you come in and you enjoy working together, and everyone's got that same work ethic, same work ethos, and, and want to progress and do well, then the job's easy. Now, the players, they're bought into that. 
the management staff, we all sing off the same song sheet. So we've had, like I said before, 92% availability, which, yeah, we can pat ourselves on the back, it's great. It's early days, but all that we can do is work on the here and now. Um, injuries, we, uh, Oli Palmer signed with an injury, um, and we've been trying to manage him. So people like him, Will Nightingale hasn't played for a long period of time with his hip operation. We need to be very careful with those players, and we can't expect those to do the same intensity and workload as the ones who have been fit. Now, it's difficult enough being in lockdown and trying to train in isolation. It's much harder trying to do that coming off the back of an injury. So we just need to make sure that with those players, we, we, we modify what they do. So, Oli Palmer hasn't played a game yet because we don't want him to play or rush him back and then come Christmas he'll blow up and then we lose him. We want to make sure that when he's back, he's back for good. And we want to make sure that when he's back, he's able to play at the level that he wants to play at so that we get the best out of him and he enjoys his football. So people like Ollie, people like Will Nightingale, it's our responsibility to modify what they do because they want to play. And if we let them, they'll train and they'll play, but we have to pull the rain, put the reins on them sometimes. And that's what we're doing with those players. Uh, Jack Rudoni, I never call him Jack Rudoni, we call him Rudy. So Rudy has been out of concussion. He uh, got a ball to the face in the first game against Corinthian Casuals. Uh, and since then he had a couple of relapses. You have to be really careful with concussion and, and follow the concussion guidelines like exactly. So that's why he hasn't played. He's, he's been managed, maintaining his CV on the bike and it, it'll start running. And as soon as those symptoms subside, he'll be back out training. Rudy's a fit player. Will Nightingale is relatively fit and Ollie will get to where he needs to get to. We just make sure we have to manage them correctly. So we'll collaborate, we'll set plans, we'll set targets, we'll set goals, and we're confident that they'll reach them. Well, gentlemen, thanks very much indeed for your time, and also thanks very much for keeping us safe, and we better let you get back to it. Cheers, thanks a lot, take care.